Welcome to another edition of Conference Carolinas Chats. We're joined today by our, our compliance professionals in uh, Conference Carolinas uh, who, who done a t do a ton. Whether you know it or not, behind the scenes, they do a little bit of everything, and they're what makes Conference Carolinas run in many ways. And, uh, you know, today we wanted to have them on to kind of talk about some of the challenges and, uh, you know, everything that's going on around COVID-19, and I appreciate them joining today. We only have a few of them here today to kind of – with this round table, but we're joined today uh, by Associate Commissioner Kit Aeline. We have Hallie Thompson from Converse, Latoya Lindsay from Mount Olive, and Dustin Foles from North Greenville. Thanks for all y'all joining today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Kit, well, we'll start with you. You know, we're going to have the same question for all of you. And, uh, you know, I'll start with you with, uh, you know, obviously the world has changed, as I said, but from a conference perspective, how have things changed, you know, as you're working with the, them and the compliance professionals in the league in general, and just also working with the MCA? Yeah, it, it's been an all-consuming process. Um, for the, the past several months, we've been receiving uh, weekly updates from the, what's called the Division II Administrative Committee. Um, and we call that ADCOM for short. Um, they've got the authority to, to implement a lot of the actions that have, that have taken place in the compliance world from a, from a COVID-19 perspective. Um, it honestly feels like that by the time we provide information to the conference membership, um, we answer interpretive questions um, about COVID-19, uh, we get more information from the NCAA, and then we just do the whole dance over again. And information is revised in many situations. So relatively speaking, changes, they come rapidly. Um, but it's been neat to see everyone being flexible because they, they have to be to implement these actions by the Division II ADCOM. Obviously, you know, it's different at a, at a school, but how has it been in Spartanburg dealing with everything that, you know, all the challenges and the changes at Converse? Um, oh, it's been interesting. At first, like when we first went in quarantine um, and all like the legislative changes were coming, I was like, I'd be scared to check my email. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what's, what's next? Like, what, what are they going to change now? And it was just overwhelming. Um, it's kind of slowed down a little bit, I would say. And it's more like on a monthly basis now. Um, but it's just been trying to help the coaches deal with it and everything and all of our administrators um, and then spread it to everyone on campus. But um, I think here in Spartanburg, we're still in good spirits, though, um, with all of our – because there's so many schools here, too. Um, so I think we're all in good spirits and just ready for spring. Yeah, for sure. And, and Latoya, and Mount Olive, it, it obviously came fast and furious as well for you. But what was it like trying to disseminate this information to your coaches and, and all the athletics administration? Yeah, <clears throat> so keeping up with the changes, changes has definitely been, been challenging. Um, it seems like we were receiving, just like Kit said, almost daily emails regarding COVID waivers, extensions, the frequently asked questions. And it was a lot. And I was like, I went for, I think, like a two-week period. And I probably should not admit this, but I just, like, I'm not reading any more of those emails. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I have too much to keep up with, and I'm just not reading anymore. Um, and then trying to implement the ever-changing policies, it has really been an adjustment. Because typically, as compliance administrators, we have time to adjust to a bylaw that has been changed for the next academic year. So we have a little bit of time to kind of get our, wrap our minds around it. COVID just came through, changed everything. So coaches would come by my office and they would ask like, Latoya, what about my equivalencies? Or what about aid? Or what about the waiver? And I would just look at them and say, I don't know. And I'll get back to you. I have no idea. Because tomorrow is going to be something different. Um, so it definitely has been an adjustment with navigating and implementing the changes. But we're pressing forward. And Dustin, I'm sure you didn't have any coaches asking any questions at North Greenville, but what has it been like uh, uh, dealing with some of these same issues in Tigerville? So pretty much kind of what Talia said, uh, my hashtag was, I don't know. Uh, I always talked about getting the tattoo right across the forehead because that's all my coaches kept asking me. Every time something changed, what does this mean? And I'm like, I saw it two minutes ago, just like you did. Uh, give me some time. Let me figure it out. Um, but it's, it's been interesting to go through and, and have an NCAA manual and then have kind of our COVID manual, Q&As, inserts, and you're, you're just trying to go through all that and trying to, to figure out what the next step is. But we try to do it day by day and, you know, just trying to figure out where, what, what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, and Kit, you know, you kind of alluded to it, and these and these and the others gave a great representation from their end. But from a conference perspective, how has the group worked together and kind of navigated that to use that same verbiage, some of the same challenges 
but as a group over the last few months? Yeah, so I'll, I'll tackle that with a couple different concepts. One is kind of the, the, the conference membership, but also the national membership um, from the conference. And they're both the same concepts. They, they're working together. We're all in the same boat. Um, just complete uncertainty on what's happening this year, um, much less next week. Um, also, uh, we would share interpretations of any um, rule situations with each other. We would, we would collaborate um, with any interpretive concepts and just try to anticipate um, not only what, he, what questions are across the membership and around the country, um, but also what's going to come down from ADCOM and the NCAA. Um, so with that being said, um, the conference membership has, has been great collaborating with each other. Um, nationally, um, you know, we, we're part of the CCACA, which is the, the Conference Commissioners Association Compliance Administrators, um, which is basically the, the, the conference staff at the conference, um, sorry, compliance staff at the conference level. Um, and, and they've been great. Monthly calls, NCAA is involved with those calls. Um, and just our, our, my hope is that we successfully kind of uh, trickle down all the information we're getting from the CCACA, from the NCAA down to the membership so that they know exactly what we know um, as we just jump through this together. Yeah, it really is. A, it, that's right. That's a, that's a perfect way to say it. It's jumping through a lot of hoops, but it's uh, contingencies upon contingencies, but it's all trying to row the same way. So it's, it's definitely a lot to deal with. And Allie, that's a great segue to, uh, you know, you're doing all this and you're trying to implement men's athletics as well. Like, what has that been like at Converse trying to, and do the normal day-to-day, -day, deal with COVID-19, and then, oh, by the way, add a few sports into the mix as well. Yeah, over the summer, is very interesting. Like, we're hiring men's coaches, and they're not even coming to campus. Like, it's all over Zoom, um, which shows their dedication um, and their willingness to be here and to want to build these programs. Um, and they're here. They've hit the ground running with recruiting, um, despite everything that's going on. Um, and for me, it's just been like, all right, let's get ready for this because get ready for the signing period. Um, have to prepare myself because, you know, D2, office of one more than likely in compliance. Um, so it's like, all right, you have your women's sports and now you have your men's sports. Um, and I'm only going into like my third year of compliance full time. So it's been interesting. I'm a little anxious, but definitely excited and we're hopeful for the future. Yeah, and Latoya, speaking of adding on new things and adding on different responsibilities, one of the unique things that, you know, you have a, the ability to be a part of the championships committee and kind of seeing this from the back end as well, trying to set things up from a conference perspective, what has that been like for you, you know, dealing with your day-to-day -day role and then also kind of working with the conference in that unique way? Yep. So I like being able to serve on the championships committee. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it does help put things into perspective regarding how decisions are made, how one decision can definitely change the entire championship experience for our student athletes, um, for our coaches. I think the ADs do a fantastic job with talking through the many dynamics and understanding how the championship decision affects not just that institution, but how the, it affects all the schools that are in our league. Um, Having a compliance background does help with understanding the maximum and the minimum contest requirements and how that impacts our student athletes. But really at the end of the day, I think you have to think about holistically the entire league, not just your specific institution. So compliance does help with knowing the numbers and the bylaws, but I think really at the end of the day, it's about making sure that the decision that the decisions that are made how do they impact Conference Carolinas and the, and the greatest championship experience for our student athletes? Yeah, you're exactly right. Everything we do in Conference Carolinas, we can talk about tons of other things, but it's all about the student athletes. I mean, right. that's why we all do what we do. And speaking of that, uh, Dustin, you know, and I'm not calling you old when I say this, but you've been around Conference Carolinas for a while. So, you know, how have you seen things kind of evolve and go and go and, you know, just change over the years, particularly as we've headed into this pandemic and trying to change things at the same time? Yeah, I think it's been a, a, just a little bit of a difference. Um, now that you guys are in Greenville, right, you know, my backyard, it's, it's good to have you guys right there if I need anything. Um, Communication has been great. Uh, Kit's been great to work with. Jill also has been two people that in compliance that we definitely can use to ask any questions. And with everything going on in the pandemic, uh, there's a lot of questions that are being asked to Kit, uh, interpretations, how do we do stuff? Because it's all different. Uh, you know, your, your fall sports are now your spring sports. And now you're trying to figure out when they can practice, when they can't practice. Uh, if the 
if they get quarantined and they're out for two weeks, how do you do it? But kids done a great job with the communication uh, and then working on just the involvement of the bylaws and policies and procedures. Um, the conference has done a great job with putting that in there and communicating with us to let us know how that's going to be changed and what to do next from here on out. Yeah, you're exactly right. Communication in all areas is always key to everything that we're doing. And, you know, speaking of that and kind of segue into the final question that I'm once again going to ask uh, to all of you, uh, we keep calling it the new normal. We keep saying, you know, things are definitely changing and, and they are. You're, you're right. Dustin just kind of gave a, a, you know, a good perspective of how everything's going to be in the spring. But that means it's probably going to change going into 21, 22 in some way, somehow. We just don't know what that looks like yet. Uh, to borrow a, a verbiage from uh, LaToya, holistically, how does, it, how does that change things in Conference Carolinas? And then, uh, you know, just overall, and Kit, I'm going to kind of start from you from a conference perspective. How do you see this changing for Conference Carolinas? And, or does it? Or does it, you know, or do you think we go back to the normal or what was the old normal, I guess is, we could say? Yeah, well, I think the obvious one for everyone is more Zoom meetings and less in-person meetings. Um, just, I think budgetarily, it just makes more sense. Um, I think I think we're going to probably end up doing more of that in the quote-unquote new normal, or you know, once things get back to normal, hopefully, um, hopefully sooner than later. Um, from from a, as far as things changing um, with the, my relationship with the NCAA, my relationship with the conference membership from a communications perspective, um, I wouldn't be surprised, uh, and I have no inside information, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's a review of any of the rules that have been deregulated as a result of the pandemic. So once things get back to normal, do we really need some of the picky rules that cause administrative burden at the campus level? Um, and so I wouldn't be surprised if that gets reviewed ultimately when everything's said and done, um, whether it's recruiting, whether it's eligibility, whether it's the playing and practice seasons that have affected all sports. Um, I, I would look forward to that conversation um, once we get on the back end of the pandemic. And, and Hallie, we talked about, you know, your new normal is, is really a new normal in many different ways with men's and women's athletic at Converse and then becoming Converse University, right? Uh, but it, how does this change, uh, you know, how does this change for you or how do you see it changing your day-to-day -day job or what you're going to do in compliance at, at Converse in the future? Um, definitely as an administrative in our, as our department, um, just for like the coaches and the admins, we've taken a look at things and like, how are we doing? We always check on our athletes, our athletes' mental health, but how are we doing? Do we need to, a day where we work from home? Um, we're all back on campus now, but I think we're all more honest and open about how we're actually feeling, how we're actually doing, which has been great. Um, from the compliance standpoint, I'm hoping that some of these rules will stay. Um, I think they're I mean, we're here for the student athletes, and so I think it's for their well-being. Um, and I think they're also going to take a look at other legislation and be like, does this actually need to be the way it is, or can it be changed? Um, that's my hopes anyway. And Latoya, in Mount Olive, obviously, every, every school is a snowflake, right? Everybody's different. Uh, you know, how do you see this changing things at Mount Olive? Yeah, well, about two months ago, I really thought about doing an early retirement. <laughs> like I'm out of here, I'm done. Yeah. Can't do this anymore because it's too much change and it's yeah. like I'm going crazy. And then you know I, I had a pity party and I got back and I was like, okay, I'm fine. But really, um, in all seriousness, I think going forward, compliance. I think as compliance administrators, we're definitely going to have to be a little bit more detail oriented, which that is that is one of the aspects of our jobs anyway. But I think moving forward, we're going to have to be even more because we're going to have student athletes that are around for five plus years. And it's like, okay, you got the COVID waiver when you were a freshman and now four years later, you're a senior and you're coming back for that extension of eligibility. And it's just like, wait a minute, I don't even know. I don't even remember you, your freshman year. You're telling me you're here for a fifth year. So I definitely think, you know, keeping detail um, note records is going to be key. And also, you know, how does that impact the equivalencies and what does that mean for scholarship budgets and all of that? Um, I do think that we are kind of agreeing with what Hallie said and also Kit alluded to. I think there's going to have to be more leniency when it comes to maybe progress towards degree waivers or even legislative relief waivers just because of the time that we're in and trying to provide the best support for our student athletes. I think there are going to have to be some, some changes that are made in the future. 
And Dustin, you know, finally, with with you in North Greenville, obviously you even have the dynamic of added in. It's not obviously a Conference Carolina sport, but you have football. There's a lot of different variables that factor into everything you do daily at North Greenville. What do you think the next year, next couple years are going to look like in compliance at North Greenville? Yeah, a lot of it right now is kind of like what Toya talked about. You're having conversations with these student athletes that are planning on, you know, that we're going to be here for four years, maybe five. Now we're going to be here six or seven. Uh, and it's it's kind of a, a fun way of seeing what Conference Carolinas is doing and also hearing what Gulf South is doing for our football program. But, you know, winter sports just got that extension waiver um, and changing it from being 15 games uh, for championships to 11. And now coaches are having those conversations with those student athletes that they're going to stick around for another year and how they're going to do that. What are they going to do if they're going to graduate? Are they going to delay their graduation? And then you got the, the incoming class that's making the difference is how a lot of the seniors in high school are going to make a decision now because kids are coming back at your university and, and trying to bring them back. And scholarships have already been offered and, and allies are about to go out here in the next couple of weeks. And where do we go from there and how do we keep our budget in line with our university policies is, is the next step that we have going on at North Greenville. Right. Y'all are exactly right. Yeah, this has been a really good discussion. I don't think a lot of time, and I'm sure most compliance people, this is the way they like it. And so Toya said, you know, the attention to detail and the behind the scenes is kind of what you like. Right. But at the same time, you know, uh, you, that attention to detail means that the student athletes get to play in the NCAA. They, they get to get on the field and they get to do what they get to do. So, you know, I say all that to people have never thought about as they're watching this for the first time, how compliance works or any of that kind of stuff. These are the people that get it done and we can't thank them and all of our compliance uh, directors and compliance professionals enough for what they do in conference Carolinas. Cause that's that's exactly it. Our student athletes couldn't compete if they didn't put the work in behind the scenes to make it happen. So thank you all for joining us today, and we'll see you next time on Conference Carolina's Chats.